passages that have been gleaned from these scriptures. They've been the subject of a much debate over the years. But I want our focus to be primarily on verse 40 where it says, Save yourselves. And the first thing we ask, uh, you say, Brother Cobb, you've been preaching that the Lord saves us all the time. And I continue to preach that. But here's a case where it says, Save yourself. Somebody asked said, well, can a person save his own soul? And somebody said, well, yeah. Then the question arises, how does one save his soul? Most common answer, y'all have heard it many, many times, has always been be good, keep the commandments. Y'all heard that before, you folks that do so win it. Be good, keep commandments. And then there's the one that says negative, well, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, uh, don't do so and so. <laughs> you be rewarded for heaven because of what you don't do. That's silly, isn't it? But <laughs> it's silly the way people think or perceive God. By the way, when the people tell you to keep the commandments and to be good, y'all know anyone that's kept all the commandments? Is anyone out here that's kept all the commandments? You need to come stand before us. Y'all need to be talking, not me. No. Oh. Lord didn't know any either, did he? He said that was none good. No, not one. Amen. But if our Lord said it, since he made us, he knew, didn't he? Only God can save one's soul. The only way to be saved is his way. It's not one of many ways. There's never been but one way. That's right. God's not a respecter of persons. If you're going to get in heaven, it's going to be through Jesus. If you reject him, you reject life. Paul said to the Ephesians, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. But we don't deserve what the Lord has prepared for us. We don't deserve it. We get in anyway, because he gives it to us. Our part is believing, trusting. And unless we believe, obviously we can't be saved. But what was Peter talking about when he said in verse 40, to save yourself from this untoward generation? from this crooked generation. Folk, our generation is on a downward spiral. If you would, let's, let's read uh, what Billy Graham said at the bottom of your page there in a moment. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, woe to those who call evil good. But that's exactly what we've done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and reversed our values. 
We've exploited the poor and call it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and call it welfare. We've killed our unborn and call it choice. We have shot abortionists and call it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and we call it building self-esteem. We have abused power and call it politics. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and call it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and call it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of forefathers and call it enlightenment. Search us, O oh God, and know our heart today. Cleanse us from sin and set us free. Amen. Folks, that pretty well tells us about our country. The place that we so dearly love. I heard the, the news this week there was at least three plane crashes. People had killed like as many as nine people and wrecked smaller planes. But I remember the news of one that had just happened. They said the plane had lost contact with the tower. And obviously they found uh, the remains of the crash. But I thought of that. We're like a plane that's spiraling down. And we've lost contact with the tower. Our nation I'm talking about. Peter's generation was like this. They crucified Jesus. Can you imagine them taking the Son of God and as they took his hand and placed it on the cross and they took those staves and drove them in. Can you imagine the cold heartedness the people, and when they stood that cross up, it tore in his hands and his feet again. It'd take a wicked bunch to do that, wouldn't it? When they knew that this man had not sinned, and they killed him anyway. But our generation is in trouble. Most of you are aware that I used to do pictorial church directors for churches of all groups. About 20 years ago, I was downtown. Church been there celebrating their 100th anniversary. And I was flabbergasted. I used to go in and knocking on church doors and uh, I knew people had different doctrines than what we have. But I went into this church. They wanted to do a directory for their 100th anniversary. They had a brochure printed up. Now this tells you where we're at. This is 20 years ago. They said, we want people to know, the public to know, that our senior minister, our senior pastor, I'm going to use the word, they use the word gay. But I'm using the word sodomite or homosexual because that's what the Bible called them was, was sodomite. Yeah. Right. But they said, we're happy to say that our pastor is involved in that for a number of years, been involved with his partner. And then there was a sign up that says, gay movies every Friday evening. This is in the church I'm talking about. Can you believe that? And people accept that thing. And 
Nowadays, the, that group has gained so much clout. People watch what they say because they don't want to offend anyone. What are you going to say when that person winds up in hell? And you didn't speak out against it. I tell you what God had to say about it, and he, He's the one that counts. If a person be in that manner, they were to stone them to death. That's not my ruling. It's not the state of Texas ruling. It was God's ruling. Because they didn't want them to corrupt the rest of the folks. And folks, that's what's been done many, many times. Those guys have literally destroyed some little boys' lives. And messed him up for a lifetime. But it's sad, folks, but that's the day we live in. Peter said, save yourselves from this untoward or this ungodly generation. Save yourself from this worldly system. <coughs> you would now look in the middle of your page there. The one verse of scripture, 1 John 5, 19. John said, and we know that we are of God. We also know that the whole world lieth in wickedness. Now, this is way back in John's day, 1950 years ago. The whole world was lying in wickedness then. And the process has gotten worse. It's sad. But the question comes, you say, Preacher, you're talking about saving yourself how you do that? By walking with God. Amen. Now, but one fellow in the Bible that it says point blank that he, that he that a lot of people walk with God, but point blank but one man that walked with God. Y'all remember him? Enoch walked with God. I can hear, still hear old brother Lester Roloff saying, if Enoch walked with God, why can't we? <laughs> and folks, you're right on. It's a matter of will. Will we choose to walk with God? Person said, I don't want to get too much involved in church. They'll call me a fanatic. <laughs> you heard that before? Yeah. I had a relative of mine when I really got down to start the study of scripture and I was making up for lost time. He said, Boy, you're reading that Bible too much. That's what he told me. He said, I've got a cousin over in Rust, the insane asylum, that read the Bible too much. <laughs> what he said. Folk, well, it's the word of God. We get to walk with God that wrote the book and gave us life. The Lord said, "With me, you're with me. Are you against me? Can you be both? So my challenge to all of us today is that we choose to walk with God. We began by baptism, don't we? Last Sunday we observed that. Uh, Vanessa uh, 
Brother Pastor uh, and Ricky. We observed that and we were blessed in seeing her make her life count for the Lord. When we are baptized, we show the world in whom we believe. We're not baptized. It's, I've got a little, by the way, a certificate in my Bible here from one of Linda's uncles that died some 30 years ago. But when he was 60 years old, his pastor of the particular denomination, he was there, said he was baptized to be saved. Wrong way. Nope. Wrong way. But that's what the certificate bears out, that he was baptized to be saved. Folk baptism is for people that's already trusted Christ. We commit our lives to the Lord when we follow him in baptism. Y'all saw, those of you that were here after we baptized her, we received her into the church. She became a church member. Folks, there's no greater honor on earth than to be part of that family. The true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 42, we read a moment ago, if you look back, it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added, I'm excuse me, in verse 41, they added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking the bread and in prayer. They continued taking the Lord's Supper, and they continued to pray. And the Lord made a statement plainly, ask and you shall receive. You don't get any more simpler than that. Ask, he said, knock, and it shall be open unto you. Seek and ye shall find. But these folk continued in doctrine I heard a pastor over in Louisiana say the other day, he said on Facebook, <laughs> he said, well, I can't feed y'all if you don't come. <laughs> you don't, if you don't come to church, how can I give you the spiritual <laughs> things that you have need of? He was feeling a little desperate and uh, having a few church problems, actually. But he was bemoaning the fact that people weren't coming to church so he could feed them spiritually. Well, folk, he's not the only one. You look at our roles, our numbers, and we've got some 250 people, 300 members, I'm not sure no more. But their names on our roll. You look up, where are they? <laughs> only he knows. Only he. We hope <coughs> they're still among the living. Many we don't know about. But we must stay away from the things of the world lest we be ensnared. We need to learn to say no. mentioned about the group, the church, the people wanted to, to do a anniversary for their church. And it, that element that was there down here on 11th Street, the people called our office to come take their pictures up uh, in Ohio at the time. They wanted us to come down here on 11th Street and take the pictures of the church. And a fellow that worked for me, a, Another pastor, he called me, he said, well, Cobb said, you know what kind of people are? 
He said, it's a gay church, all gay, 100%. Every brochure out in the front is on age or uh, something to that effect. And I said, Fred, you tell them they don't fit our category. We take family pictures Amen. and print church directories. A whole church. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It used to be called the Evangelistic Temple some years ago. They had a Assembly of God pastor that flew in there with a helicopter. Every Sunday he'd fly there up to Kingwood. And he messed up and things went. And they sold the building to this group. That literally sodomized. It's sad where our generation has gotten. God put the church in the world. Satan comes along and put the world in the church. Shall I say that again? God put the church in the world that we might go out and win the world. But Satan comes along and puts the world in the church. You realize that we're one of the few churches nowadays that still use a hymnal. Amen. A lot of them got this punk rock music. They call it Christian, but it doesn't sound like Christian to me. You look at the lyrics. I'm trying to just tell you where we've gotten. And we need to save ourselves from becoming part of the world. But the end result, if we save ourselves, if we walk with God, then God can take us and use us to win those lost to Christ. But in Peter's day, many others were saved because of their testimony of the church. Y'all remember the story of Ananias and Sapphire? How they lied to the church about what they gave. They said, well, we went and sold some land, property. And this is it. This is all we got. Number one, they didn't have to give it to the church. But they lied about it. And they said this was all. You remember what God did to Ananias first? God struck him dead in front of the congregation. A couple of hours later, Miss Sapphire comes along. And they said, Sapphire, was this all that you and Ananias got for your property? That's it. Boom! Carry her out. Bury her. They lied to the Holy Spirit, and you can't do that. Right. Number one, God looks on the inside anyway. He already knows our heart, doesn't he? 
But you know what happened after Ananias and Sapphira? Word got out. And it says people were afraid to join that church. <laughs> I guess so. You're going to lie. That's what the scripture says plainly. People became afraid to join the church. Keep your act straight and you don't have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Is that right? Keep it straight. Keep walking with God. All right. It still works. And I'm persuaded that if a church is what, if we contend for the truth continually, the truth's going to prevail. We may not look like it in number now, but truth always prevails. Always. 